Hello and welcome back to our welding educational video series. I'm Randy Emery, I'm a welding educator here at College of the Sequoias in Tulare, California. Today's lesson will cover the GTAW process. During this lesson I'll be describing some basic concepts of the process and then we're going to go into the welding lab and take a look at equipment setup. What is the GTAW process? GTAW stands for Gas Tungsten Arc Welding, also referred to as TIG welding, which is a non-standard term. The GTAW process will require a constant current type power source. Also, the GTAW process uses a non-consumable tungsten electrode and will also require an external shielding gas. When using the GTAW process, filler metal may or may not be used. This is referred to as autogenous welding. Okay, now, now a few uh, important items about polarity in the GTAW process. When welding aluminum or magnesium, AC polarity will be needed. DCEN, or direct current electronegative, is a polarity used for most materials. DCEP, or direct current electrode positive, is rarely, if ever, used in the GTAW process. Now a little bit about GTAW process advantages. Because of the fine arc control of the GTAW process, it works very well on thin materials. Another big advantage of the GTAW process is that it works very well on a wide range of base metal alloys. The GTAW process can also produce very high quality welds. A very important quality feature of the GTAW process is that it will not produce any slag or spatter. Now a little bit about GTAW process limitations. Portability is a problem because gas cylinders and hoses are needed for the GTAW process. Outdoor use of the GTAW process can also be a problem due to windy conditions. This could disturb the external shielding gas leading to porosity and quality problems. When using the GTAW process, the base metal must also be thoroughly cleaned prior to welding. Because the filler metal is manually fed, the process has a very low deposition rate. And also the GTAW process is widely used manually and it requires a very high operator skill level. For the AWS filler metal classification of the GTAW process, the classification mimics the GMAW filler metal classification exactly. Briefly take a look at this slide for reference, but for a deeper explanation, head over to our GMAW segment located at the bottom of your screen. Now we're out here in the welding lab. I wanted to show you some of the accessories and a little bit about equipment setup so you can begin to weld with the GTAW process. Here we have typical GTAW torch parts. Here we have the gas diffuser, which screws directly into the torch body. And then the gas nozzle will screw onto the other end of the gas diffuser. Here we have a welding collet, which holds the electrode in the torch. And this point at the collet will be the electrical connection between the torch and the electrode. Here we have a typical 1 16th tungsten electrode. You'll notice the red color code on the end. That tells me this is 2% thoriated. So we need to identify what type of electrode we are using. And another uh, important item to note is that all of these items should be the same size. These two items will be stamped with the size of the electrode and then verify the size of the electrode matches the parts that you have. Here we have a typical welding nozzle made out of a ceramic material and this will screw to the front of the gas diffuser. And this will complete the assembly of your torch for a typical GTAW welding exercise. Here we have another style of GTAW torch accessories. Here we have a, a gas diffuser, also called a gas lens. You'll notice the front of the lens has a screen in the front of it. This is to uh, produce a smoother column of shielding gas, which leads to higher quality welding and a little cleaner finished weld. Here we have a welding collet, which is exactly the same 
as you saw in the first group of parts, as, as is the tungsten electrode. So just like the first group of parts, we need to identify the sizes and make sure the sizes of these three parts match. And here we have a welding lens. See the little larger diameter, which uh, fits over the gas lens and creates a much smoother shielding effect. And this white item here is an adapter that fits into the back of the welding nozzle and seats up against the torch body. Here's another variable all GTAW welders must understand to be effective. Tungsten electrode in preparation. Here we see the, the ground point of a tungsten, ground in a longitudinal direction. Here we see the bald end shiny with just a round tip on the end of the electrode. The ground tip is for the ferrous materials, mild steel or stainless steel. And the round end or the bald end is for non-ferrous materials such as aluminum or magnesium. So be sure to check your in preparation before you begin a welding practice. Okay, here's a few items about filler metal in the GTAW process. Be sure to identify the AWS classification before you select the proper filler metal. Here we have ER70S-2. That's what these two filler rods are. And here we have stainless steel, 308L. So be aware of the AWS classification that you need for a welding application. Be sure to identify the filler metal before you start welding. Another aspect of filler metal is what is the diameter? We need to identify the proper diameter of the filler metal. Here we have 1 16th mild steel, ER70S-2. Here we have 3 32nd of the same classification. And then we have 8th inch of 308L for stainless steel welding. So be sure to identify these characteristics of the filler metal before you start your welding exercise. Okay. Now, now that we know a little bit about the GTAW TIG torch, and the accessories needed. Let's take a look at the assembly process. Here you have a typical number 17 TIG torch. Here we have a gas welding lens and a, a nozzle, ceramic nozzle screws into the front of the lens. We slide the adapter onto the back of the nozzle. We screw that into the front of the TIG torch. No tools required, we just need this hand tight. Okay, we get it snug. And then here we have the collet with the electrode loaded into it. We push that into the back of the torch body. And then we take our end cap and screw it into the back of the torch body. We set our electrode stick out and then tighten the back cap so it grips the tungsten and holds it firm. And there's your typical TIG torch assembly. Now look at the front of the GTAW power source, some of the things a welder might need to know about. Uh, of course, we have a work clamp, which we clamp to your work. We have a power switch, let's turn the power on. And here we have a mode switch. We wanna be sure we're in TIG mode. Push the mode switch, it takes us into TIG mode. And what that does, it, it turns the control of the amperage over to a foot control. Any TIG welder that uses a foot control should realize that it's a lot like a gas pedal. If you need more amperage, you simply press the foot control more. Okay? And of course, in the middle of the power source, you'll see the polarity selection switch. From our earlier lesson, we realized that DC EN, or electrode negative, is probably the most popular polarity. Along with that, we have a pulse control. And in a later lesson, we're gonna talk about some pulse applications for TIG welding. To finish up our notes on the GTAW process, I wanna show you some of a few detailed variables a welder needs to consider. The first item mentioned is the direction of travel. The direction of travel may vary depending on a variety of factors. Those factors may include 
welder's comfort, joint accessibility, or welding procedure requirements to mention the most common. The next item, the gas nozzle, is a ceramic cup that will direct the shielding gas to the welding zone. There are many different types and styles of gas nozzles. The selection of gas nozzles may depend on such factors as joint design, shielding gas requirements, and the welder's skill level, to name a few. The next item is the filler metal. Since the GTAW process is a manual process, the welder must be trained in the various techniques used to apply filler metal to the molten weld pool. Next we have the arc. This is a common variable we find in the previous processes. The arc is a very critical part of the GTAW process. Because the GTAW process will not generate any smoke, the arc is very visible. For that reason, it is one of the great benefits of the GTAW process and it will lead to superior arc control. This will make the critical welding easier for skilled welders. The next item is the shielding gas envelope. The shielding gas is a critical requirement of the GTAW process. Improper shielding may lead to poor weld quality because of porosity or pitting. The shielding gas envelope might need protection if disruptive wind currents are present. The next item, solid weld metal, is another common arc welding item. As in the other processes discussed in this lesson, the size of the solid weld metal deposit must be controlled. A lack of size control may lead to overwelding or underwelding, causing weldments to become unacceptable for a given service condition. Our next item is the non-consumable electrode. Unlike the other processes, the GTAW process uses a non-consumable electrode. This means the filler metal will be manually fed into the molten weld pool. The issues a welder needs to be aware of are what type of tungsten is best, what size of electrode should be used, what type of in prep is needed, and what amperage is correct for a given electrode type and diameter. These are some of the critical questions a welder needs to answer to be a productive GTAW welder. The final item on the process is the gas inlet. This is just indicating the tube carrying the shielding gas from the compressed gas cylinder to the welding torch. These are all the variables a welder needs to be comfortable with when performing the GTAW process. That concludes our segment on the GTAW welding process. It also wraps up our set of videos entitled Welding Processes and Applications. Be sure to stay tuned for our next set of videos and thanks for watching.